Hello everybody, it's Ann. I'm going to do another one of my shop your stash, get your Chris get Christmas, get your Halloween costume together kind of things. This was a dollar at the Dollar Tree. Unfortunately, the cute bow that's in the back with the little rhinestone is in the back. But it's got a little veil and all that stuff and it's it's cute. Anyway, I picked up, yeah, I know, it's a shop your stash, but I just couldn't resist. There was these really adorable little spider earrings. They've got them this way, and then they've got smaller spiders on chains to do the dangly bit. These two have decided to lock together, and I've got stuff in my other hand. So, yeah, they're really cute. Anyway, I picked out... I was thinking, all right, which one am I going to do this time? I was thinking a pirate. Sort of. Sort of a pirate. So I picked out one of my palettes, which has a black in it. You'll understand that in a little while. Anyway, this is the palette. It's the Sunset Rush by Carity. And... Miss Nona gave me this one. This is a pretty thing. And it's got a lot of fall colors in it, but it's got that black down there. We're going to need that. So, if you've got a palette that's got a black in it, or if you've got a singular black all unto itself, you've got everything you need. Not a big deal. Got a bunch of stuff piled up here. Do 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 do. Let's see if I can get this is a rather large palette. A rather small space. Crash boom bang. That was my water bottle. I try to keep my water bottle around so that I can use it when I need it. And people I live in southeast Oregon which is on the edge of high desert and the mountains so it's kind of in between but the humidity here is way low now I've already put my foundation on and powdered it a little mainly because it's not going to matter much once I get finished with a lot of this and I'm not worried about the fallout because I'll just mess it around anyway. I mean, I'm supposed to look a little bit gnarly if I'm a pirate. But, yeah, this is my third time, excuse me, using the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover with the SPF 50 in it. Yeah, in case you haven't figured out, I'm really liking this stuff. It's gorgeous, and it feels good, and it doesn't break up on me, and I just, I just like it. One of the other Maybellines that I tried to use, the Fit Me, it just, it didn't fit me. So, anyway, I've got that bit on. Did the clean skin to start, moisturize, toddly doddly da. The sunscreen is in the foundation, so that skips a step. Yay! No, I have not bothered to prime the face, because I just didn't. So there you go. going to put a little bit of white base over here and a little bit of white base over here. I'm not as worried about getting base on this one as I am on this one. Do 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 Doodly-doo, doodly-doo. 
ゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥゥProbably get the the point of the black shortly. Hi, baby. That's my grand boy. He's adorable. He's out in the hall chattering. No, I'm not coming there. If you want to see me, you come here. I'm busy, baby. I'm busy, baby. Love you. Now, let's see what kind of trouble I can get myself in. Now, I'm not going to be able to give you shade colors because they don't name them. Or if they do, they're on the back somewhere. But I don't have shade names for these. This is just kind of a medium tan. There. Now, I'm going to pick up something a little different. One of the red shades. Just because I like it. Because it's beautiful. Definitely a fall shade. Looks almost like sugar maple leaves. that off just a little bit and set that over here because I may need it in a little while now let me find something to work with because I'm going to start going in to the inner corner red with some shimmer to it. Little spritz. There goes my bottle. I'll have to use a different bottle.
Yes, I know, this is a very tiny little brush. And I'd get a lot further a lot quicker if I used a slightly wider brush, which means I need to go wash some brushes. That's basically what that means. I've been working and working and working on stuff and I really need to go wash some brushes. I'll probably go do that after I'm finished with this. Because I'm about out of brushes. I'm running out of clean brushes and I'm using colors that are so pigmented and reds and blues and purples will stain your brushes like nobody's business. So you can't just easily dust them off with a color switch and use them again. Let's see, what am I going to go to now? See, this is the fun part on doing this when it comes to doing all the colors and stuff. Let me see what I've got in the oranges. Ooh. This is kind of a gold orange. And run that right between those two reds. And not quite all the way up into that original brown. Kind of lost that anyway, but I'm not as worried because it's tending to alter what the colors laid over it look like in spots. See, it's a little paler here and a little darker here because it's going over another color. I'm rather fond of this. It's very shiny. Let's see. Let's see what I'm going to put under the eye. I think. Oh, that's a scary sound. Me thinking. I'm going to take some of that red shimmer that I put on the inner corner and go right up along under the lashes. And I br usually bring it out just a little bit to kind of blend in to that outer corner. this over here because I wasn't paying attention but what the heck I might as well keep going with it while I've got it on the brush and it's on my eye yes we make mistakes how about that we really do now I'm going to take that pale brown that I started with 
I'm just going to kind of do a little of this along the top edge. Just kind of buff everything out with it along that edge. Now with hooded eyes you occasionally end up with the color all the way to your eyebrow anyway. So I'm not overly concerned with having it go that high. Because let me show you about hooded eyes. If I relax my eyebrows and open my eyes, I'm losing most of my lid. The mobile lid just disappears under that fold. One of the reasons I don't normally do the um, the wing liner either, because if you've got a little bit of hooding that kind of stops back in here, you can kind of work around the hooding. Mine comes all the way out on both sides, all the way to the edge of the eye socket. I would be starting my wings way the hell out here, always, if I was trying to avoid the fold. Because some people will say, oh yeah, if you've, if you've got hooded eyes, you just start out here at the end of the fold, and I'm going, you're much younger than I am, obviously. Your fold doesn't go all the way out to, to God's creation on the outside of your eye socket. <laughs> If your fold stops, say like, you know, here or something like that, you've got some space to do a wing in a reasonable spot. Mine, stopping here, I have to start the wing way out. I'm not into it. I'll do one at some point where I show you where I fudge a wing using black shadow. I've got that light tan again, and I'm just kind of scooching it along under the red under the lashes and out this way a little bit, just to give it a little depth by smoking out that red some. See what I told you about reds? This is my brown brush. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Haven't decided what I'm putting on the inner corner yet. We'll see. Probably something from whatever I use for a highlighter. Mm -hmm. That's my grandson going upstairs. We have a bell on his door. He doesn't always let us know when he's come down. And we really do need to keep an eye on him. He's got a few challenges. So. Made a mess of my fingers with the eyeliner because the eyeliner, the little interior cap that's supposed to help keep the liner from drying out too quick will sometimes come loose from the exterior cap and get stuck on the end of the pen. See, I do do a little bit coming out from there, but I don't get really wacky with the wing unless I'm doing a really dark, smoky eye. And then I use a little extra black eyeshadow and just kind of smoke in kind of a wing shape. Pencil. It's a dark 
blue pencil. But it's a blue pencil. Put that right there. Now I've got a brown pencil that I'm going to use all the way around on the other eye. As long as I can find it. <laughs> it's playing hide and seek with me. And I'm going to do a little eyebrow here. I don't do a lot of eyebrow. I still am not really used to a lot of eyebrow. See, when I was younger and my hair was being much paler on its own before I started darkening up as the years went by, my eyebrows stayed really pale for a long time and they've only really begun to darken up as the rest of my hair is darkened up. So I'm, I'm just not used to having a heavy eyebrow. And about half the time when I see Instagram eyes, I swear to God, the only thing I can think of is, is Groucho Marx with those big, heavy, squared off at the front eyebrows. And I'm like going, ladies, really, please. Aha, the brown pencil. It doesn't really matter if the pencil that you use on the off eye, whichever one you're going to do as the oddball, has brown or black or whatever in the waterline, because it's just not really going to matter much. Let's see. Actually, I think in this case, I'm not necessarily going to use just highlighter in that corner. I'm going to take a little regular eyeshadow in that cream color that's in the front of the palette. And I'm going to put that down first and kind of just round off right there around the whole thing. And then pick up... This is called Do Me by Estate. This was in one of the subscription bags. Because I'm not really looking for glam sparkle. I just want something that looks a little lighter. This is where some of the rest of it starts to get interesting. I've got, it's an angled brush, but it's kind of dense, so it's not real, it's not real floppy, and I don't want it to be floppy, because what I'm going to do is start picking up the black. Pick up the black. And I'm just going to start tapping the black on. You don't have to be precise. You don't have to be perfect. It's not going to matter. Yes, I'm putting it in the eyebrow. Because the concept here is to have a costume piece that doesn't actually interfere with your walking vision. And eye patches, real eye patches. I mean, you can pick them up for a couple of bucks at the drugstore. 
because they have them and they're fairly nice and people use them after eye surgery. You could pick them up at costume shop. Same thing. It's the same bloody patch, okay? It's a black patch that you cannot see through that does not let light through and has a little piece of elastic that goes around your head. Same damn patch. Only difference is one is in a novelty package, the other one is in a medical device package. It's a little satin covered patch. Now if you really want to you can go around the outside of this thing with some other stuff to make it kind of stand out. That's up to you. You can do that. But this way, yeah got a patch on your eye, sort of. You can be all happy about having the patch on your eye so that you look like a pyrite. You can be all kinds of pyrite-y. Go sing pirate songs, you know. But it also doesn't matter whether or not the band for this thing, the band, slips, moves around, doesn't stay put, interferes with any other makeup, it won't break and leave you drooping. Now, if you want to get really spectacular with it, like if you've got a color set like the one I've got that's got the reds in it, you could put a drop of blood coming down if you really want to. You could put black goo coming down if you really want to. You could put a scar that runs from here and comes out here. Let's see. Red lip pencil. Depending on how fresh you want the scar to look, you can start with the red, put a little brown in it. You know, if it's still sewn up because nobody bothered to take the stitches out, which has been known to happen. Runs black across. Because sometimes if you forget to take the stitches out, they'll grow in. Now, if you really want, you can do the rest of the standard makeup. I mean, you could put the blush on. You can put the bronzer on. I would put it all on this side, mostly. I've got my bronzer. Well, or as I call it, bronze tour, because I use a little bit with a contour brush to kind of carve cheeks a little and drag it down so that I've got a little definition in my Pooji face and put some down under here while I try and convince myself it makes it harder to see my 
double chin. I really don't care. Anybody who's ever watched me knows I have a double chin. All you gotta do is look. It used to be bigger. I've lost some weight. Not enough, but some. Now, see, I'm not going to bother putting blusher and stuff on this side. I put the contour on to do the carve out. But I'm not going to do the blusher and stuff on this side. It would interfere with this stuff. See, I get a different brush and just kind of dust to do the bronzer version. Go up here just a little. I mean, I'm supposed to be a pirate. Pirates are normally out in the sun on the sea, so there should be some brown here and there. Maybe a little bronzer over here. I just won't go up very high. Put some in here. Some over here. I mean, so it just won't go up very high. Don't want it to interfere with the other stuff. Yes, I did something with an amazing amount of glitter the other day, and God help me, I have washed my face repeatedly, and I still have glitter on my face. This stuff is pernicious. Okay, a little blush. I like this one. This is a Pixie by Petra. And it's called Whisper Pink, but it's kind of mauve and I, I, I appreciate mauve. I also call it Dusty Rose. But it doesn't clash or anything with the colors in the eye. Kind of sneak that in because I like my color. I like looking like I'm relatively alive. I'm picky. This is another one, and I just gouged my finger in it. My thumbnail. Anyway, this is another one from one of the um, subscription bag boxes. The bronzer that I used is actually a blush that comes from AOA Studios, and it's called Perfect Blush. It's Shop Miss A. Costs a buck. Um, and this one is called Fino. Now, on a person with a darker complexion, this probably is a great blush. On my uncooked chicken breast type face, it makes a good bronzer. Alrighty, liner, don't have the mascara on yet, I'll get to that. Haven't decided on a lip color, have not. Now I used this the other day with my, <laughs> my blue look, I don't think that's going to cut it. Okay, let's get... Rocking and rolling here. Got my mascara. This is some elf mascara. Elf mascara is lovely stuff. It's a nice formula. And it's affordable. I love elf. I have a fairly large collection of elf because it's affordable that means I can afford to buy it to create a collection I can currently do a full face of elf except that my elf primer for the eyes has run out and so has my setting spray and what else I think that's it. Yeah. My e.l.f. eye primer has run out. And my setting spray from e.l.f. has run out. But I've got a full face of e.l.f. 
on my playlist already. So I'm not too worried. I'll be right back. I think this will work. Elf. 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 It's an elf lip. In a color called Bordeaux. Yes, I use lip liners for stuff like this. I almost never use a lip pencil. You know that women of a certain age are supposed to use a lip pencil to keep those little vitamin B deficiency creases from, from bleeding up? Doesn't really work. Yes, it's glam on this side. Until I get down like here. And then I'll hit both sides. Run the nose a little. I like this estate. It gives you just a little shine. It's not blinding. I mean, this is not going to the club. Kind of. Look here. This is a going to the local bar or trotting around with your kids doing trick or treat. And you can see where you're going. But you can give everybody a wink. There you go. Shot my stash. There it is. One more in the lineup. 